combinatorial arguments, what are they? Why should we study them? Well, let me give you some of my opinions. First off, they're really beautiful. Okay, and I want to try to bring that out in this series of videos. Not only that, they're very good tools for exploring problems. You can, you can take an idea and you can work with it and like a river, you know, you, you go along the river of ideas and you discover uh, all kinds of things. That's what we're going to do in this seri series of videos. We're going to start with some simple idea and we're going to go along the river and see what we can find. So it's a, it's a great way great way to find new results, new discoveries in math. We're going to discover something, we're going to discover something, it's going to look new, but it's actually something already known, but the way we're going to approach it is kind of novel, you'll see. And uh, the last point, I think that it, it works out your imagination and creativity. It, it exercises, exercises your uh, mathematical, mathematical imagination and creativity. So that's why I recommend that you learn combinatorial arguments and you practice them, you practice thinking along these lines. Okay, so let's start. Hang on, I'll erase this. Yeah, let's start with... Hmm, I'm gonna start with something really fundamental, properties of binomial coefficient. But before we get into that, let me show you what is the combinatorial argument? How does it work? Well, we have two, two guys, right? We have Jim, this is Jim, and we have Bob. This is Bob. I guess I should put a face on them, right? Okay, Jim and Bob. Now, Jim and Bob, they count the same objects. Jim and Bob count the same objects. So let's say I have some objects, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have n objects. Jim and Bob are going to count these objects, but they count differently. Bob has a way of counting that's different from Jim. Jim and Bob count differently. However, they count differently, but if both are correct, then the answers they get must be the same. So Jim's, Jim's answer must be the same as Bob's answer if they count correctly. Right? This is the idea. This is the point. This is what a combinatorial argument is. Look at this. Jim and Bob count differently and they end up with some kind of equation or identity. This is the thing you want. This is a technique for proving this. You see? So that's the idea of combinatorial argument. So let's start with n objects and we're going to count these objects. First of all, let's count them count the ways of choosing let's let's count the ways of choosing one the ways of choosing one object from this pile of objects here okay so we have two ways that the jim way of doing it and the bob way of doing it okay so jim three, four, five, six, seven. jim jim has this kind of very easy way of doing it he's just going to count them uh, binomial coefficient n1. Very simple. From n, you choose one. How many ways to do that? n1. That's Jim's way of counting. Now, Bob, Bob has a different strategy. 
he moves one of these elements over to the side and it becomes special. Now, how many ways to count this? Well, from n minus 1 objects, you count 1. And how many ways to count this thing? How many ways are there to select 1 from here? How, how can I count that? Well, it's 1 from 1. From one object, I select 1. But, Bob likes to count in kind of a convoluted way. Another way of thinking about this is like this. Instead of choosing this object, I can say I don't choose anything from here. So another way to say this is from n minus 1 objects, I choose nothing. That's the same as choosing this special object. And if Jim and Bob both, both count correctly, then this must be equal to this plus this. Great. Now let's count pairs of objects. Now, pairs of objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jim, and here's Bob. This is what Jim's up to. And what is Bob up to? Well, Bob's doing his thing with two, three, four, five, six. He's moving one object out here to be special. So Jim counts it the regular way using just straight old um, binomial coefficient and it's n2. From n objects, I select two. That's the number of ways to count a pair. Pairs. Okay. Now, Bob's going to count this differently. From this group, if you want a pair, there's n minus 1, 2 ways to do it. From n minus 1 objects, I select 2 at a time. This is the number of ways to do it. But there is another way that involves this thing. I can make a pair like this by joining the special object to each one of these. How many of these are there? n minus 1. So, there is n minus 1, 1 ways to make pairs here. From n minus 1 objects, I select 1 to be paired with the special object, you see? And there's n minus 1, 1 ways to choose this to be paired with the special object. So I get this many. So this must be equal to n minus 1, 2 plus, plus n minus 1, 1. Now you see the pattern here? Look at this pattern. Let's go back here for a sec. Look at this. 1, 1, 0. 2, 2, 1. What's going to what's gonna be the next step here? Let's see, let's see here. Triplets of objects. Triplets of objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jim is going to be counting the triplets. How many ways to do a triplet here? Well, it's N3. Bob is going to count in a non-obvious way with his special object on the side. There's, there's two aspects I have to study. First, the triplets that are in here, well, there's n minus 1, 3 of them. And then there's the triplets that I can form with the special object. Well, I take a pair, and here, I can form a triplet. How many ways are there to do that? n minus 1, 2. Why? There's n minus 1, 2 such pairs, and I, pair, I can pair it up with this. Total is n minus 1, 2 triplets that I can form with the special object. So again, this must be equal to this plus this, and so on, and so on. We keep going, and what do we find? Well, n choose k from n objects, we choose k. Jim counts it this way, Bob will count it a different way. It's n minus 1 k plus n minus 1 k minus 1. There we go. Okay. So we end up finding this beautiful formula, this identity of binomial coefficients. Jim has counted it like this, and Bob has counted it this way. It must be equal, since they're both counting correctly. Or so we think, right? We think they're counting correctly. So we say. Now, this has an interesting connection with Pascal's triangle, as you 
you probably know. How do we create Pascal's triangle? One, 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 two, one. Let's try to do a good job. One, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Well, your typical Pascal triangle element, this one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 6, 4. This is the sum of previous elements. You take the two previous elements that are above here, and you add them, and you get this element. That's how everyone knows to create Pascal's triangle, right? But look carefully, let's label these things. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 5, 4. And this one is 5, 3. Now, this corresponds exactly to what's going on here. Okay? I end up with, I end up with 6, 4 is equal to 5, 4 plus 5, 3. You see? That corresponds to the thing that we just discovered. This is exactly the way to construct Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is constructed by using this rule. And in fact, I can maybe draw it a little bit bigger, like this, and you'll see. Watch. This plus this gives me this. This one is, is this guy here, and minus 1k. And this one, n minus 1, k minus 1, I add them together and I get n, k. We have discovered the rule for creating Pascal's triangle using a Jim and Bob combinatorial argument. Good old Jim and good old Bob, right? We're going to come back to Jim and Bob in the next video. You see, the natural question should come to your mind right now. Hmm... What's the natural question? The natural question is about this. Why should I use just one special object? What if I use more than one? So what happens if I use more than one special object? This is where the creative aspect of combinatorial arguments comes in. You can think about this. It's like diving into the stream or river and seeing where it takes you. And we'll see in the next video. All right, what if we have more than one special object? Object. That is a really good question. This thing, what if we have more than special one special object? This is the next video. Okay. So hang on for that, coming up next. If you like this, click like, subscribe, and hang on for more combinatorial arguments.